Hey, what is up, nerds and Final Cut 10 friends? I got it. I got my Vega 64 in the mail. It's a monster of a card. And I did some testing. Let's jump into Final Cut 10 and show you some numbers. All right, here we go. This is the same project. I did the tests before, so I don't want to get uh, too deep in this. Uh, you can check the whole video if you want to see more what is in this project. So same machine as before, 2016 MacBook Pro, just a basic model. So this is the RX Vega 64 from Asus. Quite a bit better numbers, at least on paper, this card really shines. Same for the project, it's on a RAID and I'm exporting to a RAID, so all is good. I also did some benchmarking, as you can see, uh, better numbers, but benchmarks are not really representing real work. So, export times, here we go. So, 2 minutes and 34 for a dual setup and 10 seconds more for the card itself, by itself. Um, that's like a minute or so faster. Not quite, but almost. So, yeah, you see improvements there. Yeah, so exporting a ProRes and the card is running on full power, hitting 1.5, 1 1.58 gigahertz for the clock speed and also the memory 945 is the maximum rate there, um, running on full power here. More interesting was the H.264 export time because that was really fast. It almost was as fast as ProRes export. So this card, not quite sure if that is quick sync or whatever. So um, this really was quite a bit faster, um, especially standalone time, quite a bit, quite a bit more performance there. All right, so now I'm exporting H.264 with the Vega card not connected to any displays. The RX 580 drives all the displays and it's not used. Uh, it only uses the Vega card and the internal a graphics card with the CPU, I think. Yeah, so there you go. With a dual card setup, uh, only five seconds or so, nothing really. But yeah, for H.264 export, this is really the card to get, I think. Here are more detailed numbers. I make a link to my Tumblr page and I will have a screenshot of that there. You can read all that. But as you can see, good numbers. Um, interestingly, with the file card noise reduction, the H.264 export with the dual card setup was, uh, and even with the standalone card, mm, not so much uh, to write home about. It almost is as slow as the RX 580. So not quite sure what's going on there, but overall, yeah, impressive numbers for the H.264 again. Um, and uh, yeah, for the rest, it's okay. All right, interesting things uh, going on. Now I have the displays connected to the Vega card. And for the ProRes export, it kind of used the RX 580, the card that is not connected to anything. And right now, I think it's the part where the noise reduction, the red giant noise reduction is, and it used both cards. So, hmm. Yeah, so that's about it in terms of export times and stuff like that. Um, playback performance is also quite interesting, but let's switch off the screen recording and switch to the camera so I don't um, waste any performance to the screen flow recording. Yeah, so I also wanted to test uh, the playback performance and so far so good uh, on better quality with those effects. A bit tricky, but with uh, by the performance, uh, it's all smooth. When it's ist und was nicht, fällt immer wieder ein Wort. Grau. Heller als schwarz, dunkler als weiß. Chemnitz ist ein Mittelding. 
mittelmäßig groß, mittelmäßig schön, hat einen mittelmäßigen Beruf. It also only struggles with our magic bullet looks effects, but otherwise it's pretty smooth. I was not able to um, play back with all the effects before I added the Vega card. So in terms of red footage, I also wanted to try red footage and I had uh, have this here. Now there is something interesting going on. Um, Actually, so 8K footage, yeah, it really doesn't use a GPU too much though. So it really has, yeah, it doesn't really play back well 8K. Even Red claims that Final Cut 10 doesn't support higher than 6K. So 8K is not really smooth at all. It's, yeah. And, And it seems not to use any GPU whatsoever or really not too much. So 6K is a bit better, but still not the best. I can see. And it really doesn't use GPU too much. So really it's a CPU thing. Doesn't really, 5K is all right. So this is pretty good. It uses a bit more GPU, but not much. So 5K is all right. 4.5K is also all right. And um, this is 4K, all good. So when I put on some effects, yeah, the 5K I mean, no, not so good. What's with the 4K? No, that, that's 5K, right? Yeah. 5K is still good. Yeah, anyways, um, interestingly, when I open up Premiere, the OpenCL workflow selected a half resolution. I mean, this is 4K, right? This is 5K, all good. This is the 1080p timeline. As you can see, it uses more GPU, interestingly. Doesn't push the megahertz or gigahertz time. But even with this footage, we had problems. Uh, it seems to be a bit better, which is funny. <laughs> Because uh, before I really, this is 8K and As you can see, all good. This is also eight, 5K, I think, yeah. Now comes the last 8K clip. And perfectly good. And you can see it uses more GPU. So funny enough, so with the, um, with RED, with the 2019 update, Of Premiere Pro, it works better for red, which is funny because before I couldn't really use Premiere at all on this machine, even with a cheap eGPU. It was really slow, no preview on this in OpenCL. So, thumbs up for Adobe for kicking up this update. This is really nice. So, yeah, interesting. So, if you work With red footage, you might be better with uh, with Premiere. That was uh, the other way around. Anyways, I think if you use quite a bit of red, you shouldn't do that on the MacBook Pro though. So maybe go for the iMac Pro. Anyways, back to the studio. Yeah, so quite interesting. Didn't expect that, but yeah, I think that's it. All right, so what to take away from all that? I mean, overall, this is a good card and the playback performance is really good in terms of uh, having good performance, even with quite a bit of effects and 4K and 2K and 
1080 and stuff like that so for that this card really helps export times i mean for 1080 prores export it's like a minute less for this project it really helped for h264 though um quite a bit faster surprisingly something is going on in this card that is optimized for h264 and two minutes um, less is quite a bit uh, of performance boost a dual setup i mean uh, didn't really help too much for the playback performance it actually was a little bit not as smooth so to speak there seems to be a bottleneck between the card that has to do the displays and the card that has to do the rendering so it was a little bit um, laggy so to speak uh, but overall if you have to do quite a bit of exporting like big projects long projects and you need fast h264 exporting and you have to push out quite a bit of uh, stuff you might prefer to have two gpus running or more even but i i'd say have two that are the same so two vega 64s or two rx 580s that seems to be better because um, they communicate better between um, each other so that is interesting and might be a good solution for me i keep one gpu one e gpu unit i keep the vega 64 i will use it for all my projects the next few weeks and months and report back i will do an update a real world update uh, if it actually helps for my daily workflow and stuff like that for my effects how is the playback performance um did i see something different with the with the use of final cut 10 and yeah that's about it also a quick side note with premiere pro this card really seems to help with performance um, it actually had more for premiere pro than with final cut i'd say in a way but that was just a quick test with the red footage so can't really say too much about it i will also report back on that i guess not quite sure because i don't really use premiere anymore um even though now the argument that i had with premiere not really being smooth on this machine it's gone away so it really seems to be a bit smoother now but then again all my edit style and how i edit my stuff is based on the final cut 10 workflow and how the magnetic timeline and all that works anyways if you have any questions let me know in the comments um i also have uh, something in my community tab if you look there i have like a little poll going on there because i wanted to know how you export actually from final cut 10 do you use compressor do you use handbrake or whatever or directly h264 out of uh, final cut 10 because i wanted to test all kinds of export solutions to see if uh, compressor does um, use the eGPU but I really want to see what uh, options you guys are using so I'm kind of kind of helping you out uh, of testing all those options quick side note I'm also quite curious if um, Nvidia cards are any helpful with Final Cut 10 if they actually work but it's also tricky to get this running you have to run some sort of script and boot in certain modes and uh, if final cut or uh, mac os is updated that all might go away and you have to do it all over again and wait for updates and stuff like that so it's a bit tricky and not really useful for a real world workflow i guess but let me know in the comments if you are keen to see that and i might go ahead and get an um, gtx card even though i'm not quite sure um yeah maybe i have to go fund me page or whatever <laughs> um, because this is useful for my work so i buy it anyways but a gtx card i'm not quite um, that much into gaming also don't have time for that so mm, not quite sure anyways that's it long enough it was too long anyways thanks for all the likes comments and subscribers and again let me know in the comments um if you have specific questions or any advice <laughs> for me um and that's it so yeah that's it bye do i need, I need a, 
a good um, thumbnail, right? OMG! What? <laughs> All right, uh, whatever. By the way, it's uh, it's uh, 12 a.m. Too much testing. Now I have to get dinner and lunch and uh, breakfast. I had breakfast, yeah, I had breakfast. Uh, all right, also I have to all put that away, repack, prepare for a shoot in Berlin. Oh my God, what did I do again? Oh no. This remote app is nice, but I can't stop the recording now. Hmm.